Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at a combination of rules when we're trying to differentiate. So whether you need to choose the chain rule, the product rule or the quotient rule. And sometimes you have to do two or three of the rules. So if we have a look at this example here, what we have is find dy dx if y is equal to x squared sine 2x. So I'm just going to write that down again. So y is equal to x squared sine 2x. And I just go in my head, I ask myself the following questions. Is it a product rule? Well, we can see it's a product rule because we've got x squared multiplied by sine 2x. So that's a product. So we're definitely going to be using the product rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the product rule underneath, which is dy dx is equal to u dv dx plus v du dx. And I'm going to label my x squared u and my sine 2x v. So just set it up as I would normally. I've realized that this is a product rule and I'm setting it up. I'm going to go to the side. I'm going to write u is equal to x squared. And the differential, that's quite straightforward. du dx is equal to 2x. You should be used to getting the, those sorts of differentials out. And then we have v is equal to sine 2x. This isn't a bog standard uh, differential. As you can see here, we have sine x goes to cos x, but we don't have any sine 2x's here. It's not a product because there's no x's times sine 2x's and there's no quotient because there's no division in here. So that means that in order to differentiate this v to make dv dx, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use the chain rule. Now, remember the chain rule, what we do for trigonometric functions is we ask ourselves is sine 2x, what would it go to? It would go to, well, sine would go to cos x. So we keep the angle. Sine 2x is going to go to cos 2x. And we write that down. So cos 2x. And then to finish it off, we have to differentiate whatever the angle is. The angle here is 2x. And the differential of 2x is 2. So we need to multiply it by 2. And we're done. So what we've had here is we've essentially got a chain rule, which is here, within a product rule, which is from here. Now all we do is we finish it off. We've got dy dx is equal to my u, which is x squared, my dv dx, which is 2 cos 2x, plus v, which is sine 2x, multiplied by du dx, which is 2x. And what we can do then, just go through that. So u here is x squared, dv dx, which is here, is 2 cos 2x, plus v sine 2x, and du dx, which is 2x. I'm going to tidy up, just turn a few things around. So we've got dy dx is equal to 2x squared cos 2x, and we've got plus 2x sine 2x, and we're finished. Okay, let's have a look at another one, maybe a more difficult one. So example two here, we have y is equal to the square root of x plus one over x minus one. And we're going to show that we're going to have this form. And this looks fairly tricky. So the first thing to realize is that we can rewrite this square root because we know that we can write that to the power of a half. So we've got y is equal to x plus one over x minus one to the power of a half. Now, we should know from the previous video that this is going to be a chain rule. So this bracket to the power of something will always be a chain rule. So what we need to do then is we're going to use the easy method to do this. So dy dx and in this type of function, what we do is we bring down the power. We rewrite the bracket take one off the power of minus a half and then we're going to differentiate the bracket now this is the big issue here is differentiating this bracket because this now is a quotient so i'm going to go to the side and write x plus one and x minus one and i'm going to run the quotient rule through this and the quotient rule is dy dx is equal to v du dx minus u dv dx all over v squared. So 
going to label this one U, this one V. I'm going to go to the side, I'm going to say that U is equal to X plus 1. And DU, DX, this is a nice easy one, is equal to 1. V is equal to X minus 1. DV, DX is equal to 1. Remember, there's 1X there. If you differentiate with just an X on the end, you just keep the coefficient. And this is a constant, and any differential of a constant goes to 0. So this goes to 0, and again, this goes to 1. Let's run it through. So I know that DY, DX in this case is equal to, and what we have is V, which is X minus 1, by, by DU, DX, which is 1, minus U, which is X plus 1, by DV, DX, which is 1, and that's all over V, which is X minus 1, all squared. So let me show you how that worked again. So it's V, X minus 1, by DU, DX, which is 1, minus u, which is x plus 1, here it is, multiplied by dv dx, which is 1, all over v squared. Okay, we can tidy up the top, so we've got dy dx here, of this is equal to, we've got x minus 1, minus x, minus 1. You can see there what we have all over, sorry, x minus 1, all squared. And tidying it up, we've got x minus x, which disappears, and then what we end up with is minus 2 over x minus 1 all squared. Now that we've differentiated the bracket, so we've now differentiated this, we can stick it at the end here, and it's just going to be a bit of algebra to try and get to the solution that we've been indicated that we should get. So what we do now is we're going to multiply that by minus 2 over x minus 1 all squared. So hopefully you can see from here that this and this will cancel. Okay, so what we'll have then is minus 1, and then we've got the x plus 1 to the minus a half, divided by x minus 1 to the minus a half, multiplied by 1 over x minus 1 to the 2. So again, just going to show you what I did there. So this 2 and this 2 cancelled out. So it means we've got minus times the 1, which gives us the minus 1 at the beginning here. Then what we've got is we have used our index laws to say that x plus 1 over x minus 1 to the power of minus a half can be broken up to x plus 1 to the minus a half over x minus 1 to the minus a half. So we've broken that up. And then what we have left is this 1 here over x minus 1 all squared. Now, hopefully, you could realise that if we have a minus power, we can take it underneath. So, for example, the, the rule that we're using here, if I said that I had x to the minus 2, that's equal to 1 over x squared, so it goes underneath there. And I'm going to use that rule in order to get this down to the bottom. That means I'm going to have minus 1 times 1 on the top, which will give us the minus 1 that we're looking for. So I can do that. So minus 1, so this is equal to minus 1 on the top. And I'm going to have x plus 1 to the half. And I also have x minus 1 to the minus a half on the bottom. And I also have x minus 1 to the square there. So that's what I'm left with. Just again to show you what I'm doing here. This minus a half has moved to the bottom here using this rule here. So if it's a negative index, you can write it as 1 over. And that's exactly what's happened. So this now comes and it goes underneath. And you can see here it becomes a positive index. Okay, we're nearly there. We've got the x plus 1 to the half on the bottom. We've got to just get this x minus 1 to the 3 over 2. And it's another index law that we're going to use. The index law I'm going to use is if you have a to the power of something multiplied by a to the power of something else, then that is a to the p plus q. So if I have the same base multiplied by another base as we've got here, so if you have a look, you have this is the base, x minus 1, x minus 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the two indices, the two indexes here. So this index plus this index, 
hopefully you can see if I do that, 2 plus minus a half is 3 over 2. So we can finish that off now. I've got minus 1 on the top. I have x plus 1 to the half from before. And then I have x minus 1 to the 3 over 2 as requested up top here.